Welcome to Douglas County News Exchange. I'm your host, Sabrina Hayes. This month's show is packed full of activities, announcements, and information, including the opening of the new Dog River Trails, highlights from the annual Senior Picnic, and the winners from Congressman David Scott's art competition. All this and more today on Douglas County News Exchange. One saying that is common for people who have retired is that they don't want to retire to expire, meaning just because they stopped working doesn't mean that they are ready to stop living. The Woody Fight Senior Center has many events to help seniors stay active, including the annual senior picnic. It was recently held at the center, and as you will see, everyone had a great time. coming to the senior picnic because I see all the people that I don't know all of them but I enjoy seeing them each year that I've come this is my third year and the food is great and I enjoy the prizes I come to the senior picnic because it's free <laughs> <laughs> and the food is good too yeah. I've been coming two years because I'm a New York transplant and I've only been here two years um, I enjoy it because there's a lot of people here, a lot of fun and games. Uh, last year I won a microwave oven, so I'm coming to see what I win this year. Uh, this is my second year I've been coming, and I'm here because I love the fellowship and meeting new friends. One of my favorite things about uh, coming to the Senior Picnic is all the information, the literature that we get from the different vendors. It's very um, informative. My favorite thing about the pick, uh, picnic is the free stuff they give out, especially the pens, because I'm a pen person. I just like all of everything. The prizes. <laughs> I think everybody likes prizes. I come to the senior picnic to bring my wife and to play some bingo. In 44. In 44. I-23. I-23, we got 75, bingo! Bingo, fantastic. Come to the picnic to enjoy the company, all the people. Just come to enjoy myself. To enjoy the picnic and all of my friends and the new friends I'm going to meet. I've been coming to the picnic for two years. I come to the senior picnic because I love to play bingo and win prizes. This is my, this is my second year. I've only been here two years. I've only been out here two years, not even a full two years yet. No, I'm looking for a man. No, I don't need a husband. I don't need a husband. I need a man. I said a man. He got to be able to stand up and walk and talk. Whole conversation. He's got to be no younger than 70. I'm not gonna take him any younger than that. I said, I'm mad. I don't want nobody moving in. I don't want, I said. Did you know that the county owns about 900 acres along the Dog River in the southern part of the county? The land was used to build the Dog River Library and with the help of staff from Parks and Recreation and an inmate crew, we now have beautiful trails that weave throughout part of the woods. Here's the ribbon cutting ceremony and a look at the fantastic addition to Douglas County. Okay, if I can have your attention, uh, 
My name is Gary Dukes, and I'm the Parks and Recreation Director for Douglas County. Uh, first of all, I want to thank everyone for coming. Uh, as you know, this is the ribbon cutting to open up the new uh, Dog River Trail. Uh, to start off, I've got a few thank yous, and I want to recognize some people uh, for their contributions and their support uh, in order to make this happen. And uh, the first group I'd like to recognize is our Board of Commissioners. Uh, Ramona Jackson Jones, our chair lady. Uh, Henry Mitchell, Mike Mulcair, Mike's here. Uh, Kelly Robinson, uh, Ann Jones Guider, she's here. And these people are the people that support the Parks and Recreation Department, give us what we need to make program happen, happen and to make amenities like this happen to ensure better quality of life in Douglas County. So let's give them a round of applause, please. Also, our County Administrator, Mark Teal. Yeah. Is uh, Sheriff Pounds here? Sheriff Pounds, I want to thank him because he is the man that supplies a lot of the inmate crews and inmate labor, and they had a significant role in making this happen. They built that pavilion with, with the help of the Parks and Recreation Department. So, uh, Tommy Ray, the officer that was over the inmate crew, he's here somewhere. Let's give him a round of applause also. Also want to thank Travis McDonald. Is Travis here? Travis is over here. Travis works with the development department of the county, and he's the one that actually laid out the trails for us with GPS so that we could go in and clear what we wanted to clear. So let's give Travis a round of applause. And last but not least, I want to thank uh, the Parks and Recreation Department, uh, all the employees of the Parks and Recreation Department. It was definitely a full effort on the entire department because we have to do these projects in the fall. We started in October to, to make this happen because that's a little, we don't have much off time these days, but if we have any, it's in, it's in the fall and in the winter. So any off time we have, we try to do uh, projects like this. So uh, I want to thank all of our Parks and Recreation employees, in particular our Parks Department, and Danny Denning, who is over our Parks, he's our Parks Superintendent, for the great job they did in making this happen. Good afternoon, this is a beautiful day and we are just amazed at this great Dog, Dog River Trails. Uh, it is an honor on behalf of the Board of Commissioners to implode this upon our beautiful county. Uh, we have so many amenities here. We have a stone arch entry, which is very amazing and beautiful. We have a picnic pavilion. We have a handicap accessible restroom. We have benches and picnic tables and accessible tables. We have, even have a security uh, camera and trash receptacles and charcoal pit for roasting. I smelled some of the smoke a few minutes ago and oh, it smells so good. And a two quarter mile walking trail and one half mile walking trail again to, to be laced and joined together. Uh, it can be reserved, the uh, picnic pavilion can be reserved by contacting the Deer Lick Park office at 770-920-7129. And the cost of this magnificent project is $90,000 and approximately $50,000 was saved by the skill set of our laborers, uh, laborers and the Park Recreation Department's maintenance division and employees. But more importantly, on behalf of the Board of Commissioners, we just want to let you know that it is our pleasure and our privilege to put this in our great county, this magnificent Dog River Trails, to allow all of our citizens to enjoy the beauty of nature. Look what God has done. This is absolutely beautiful. Give him a hand. Get out and walk the trails with your families and your children. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 
enjoy the park. It's built for the citizens. It's not built for us. It's built for you so you you make uh, a lot of use of it and enjoy it with your families and tell your neighbors about it because a lot of people that work in Atlanta and uh, don't do anything out here, they may not know just what's across the street from them. But uh, I do want to thank uh, the Board of Commissioners, the Parks Department, uh, the Sheriff's Office and his uh, help with the uh, pavilion over here. But um, this is a beautiful park and you're gonna see other things happening here. So enjoy it and thank you. Congressman David Scott was recently invited by Chairman Ramona Jackson Jones to a luncheon in Douglas County. After lunch, he graciously gave a congressional update on affairs directly related to Douglas County. Here is a portion of his speech. I am so, so delighted to be here. And I want to thank you for inviting me. Now, the first thing I want to go through, and I'll be very brief, You'll see the first hit there, 52 million, dollars to Douglas County for Highway 92 construction and utilities with the Federal Highway Administration. It is an economic generator that's gonna loosen up this whole area and get access to I-20 quickly. But the other thing it will do it will bring people through this community. And one of the things that I stress to all of the counties and cities I represent, you, you should cherish those opportunities to make your city and your county not just pass through, not just residential. You want it to be destination places because destination places yields the money. When people stop, they buy things, they go to things, and not just pass through. And that's what we want to do with Highway 92. And if you go down Midway, we got $2,369,000 for Bill Arp Road. Now, Bill Arp Road is another key artery. This whole area, going down south into the South Metro Park is going to open up other opportunities as well. If we go on down, and you will review this as you go by, there are hazard mitigation programs for Douglasville, Douglas County, we flip over. We've been able to help get cops hired with our COPS program, the CDBG Neighborhood Revitalization Project, you all will see these, they're there, and you'll see the work that, we're do that we are doing. Now, another area that I'm violently concerned is in making sure Douglas County is safe. I mean, that's a pr primary consideration for getting folks to stop here and spend money here. They're not gonna do it if we have these thugs running around here and frightening and hurting people. And that's why you see the crime assistance programs. The Edward Byrne con uh, uh, Awards, as you look down there further, you'll see eight or nine or 10 of them. We go on and we go on and we get to the last page, as Frank Sinatra would say, follow the money and you see 106 million, 846,000, $782 that your congressman has been instrumental. Didn't do it by myself. Didn't do it by myself. I want people to know that. But we provided the catalyst for 92. And when they wanted to stop it and come down, y'all remember we had to raise sand about it. And we put Highway, highway 92 on the map. 
because we stood up and we made sure that they were going to treat the people of Douglasville and Douglas County right. And that happened. And we were victorious. I'm, when I say I love Douglas County, don't make no mistake about it. And I hope that this report, with this amount of money, hundreds of millions of dollars, for this county and this city, demonstrates my great love that I have for the people of Douglas County. <laughs> Medical advances in research continue to evolve our lives. Ongoing research in the area of sudden infant death and safe sleep habits has led to a change in suggested infant sleep guidelines. Fortunately for us, we have an expert on hand to help us understand the new tips for sleep safe habits. Here is Lynn Snow from Douglas County Safe Kids. We're here today to discuss safe infant sleep practices for children. We have over 4,000 children who die in sleep-related instances per year. Just in the state of Georgia, we have three children a week who pass uh, from sleep-related deaths per week. So we wanted to show you what is not the ideal situation for infants sleeping, um, ideally up to one year, one year of age. Uh, Zero to six months is the most critical time for children and have the uh, most potential um, of dying in sleep-related cases. So in, here we have numerous soft, soft items around the infant and as you can see, um, potential hazards for suffocation. We have uh, pillows and soft items, uh, stuffed toys and blankets that are not, not ideal to a situation where a child could possibly suffocate. So this is what I'm talking about for safe infant sleep practices. We call this the ABCs of safe sleep. A, my baby is alone. B, my baby is on her back, and C, my baby is in a crib or a bassinet alone. So again, no plushed items could, that could potentially cause suffocation to my baby, and um, no blankets uh, that could potentially cover her or asphyxiate her. Now, um, it's very important that uh, children be, be, pl be placed on their back for every single sleep time, including nap. Um, if you as a parent do everything correctly every single time and then even in one instance the child is put to sleep on her belly, she's now seven to eight times more likely to suffer from sleep-related infant death. So ideally, I know this child looks very lonely, but this is the ideal situation according to um, the Georgia Safe Sleep Coalition as well as the American Academy of Pediatrics. Uh, the American Academy of Pediatrics came out reinforcing these guidelines this past Past October and as well also added a recommendation to roll the crib or a bassinet into the parents room during the first six months of the child's life. Um, in addition to the crib, um, it's incredibly important that the child is not sleeping in the adult bed with the parents uh, during the first year of life. Uh, there are so many additional potential items and possible causes of suffocation including the adults as well as pillows, blankets, and uh, sheets as well. In cooler temperatures, if you're worried about keeping your child warm, instead of using blankets or room heaters, uh, you also have an option to utilize uh, these sleep sacks or sleep gowns. Um, so these are readily available in children's stores and can be placed over the child. There are no blankets involved, no loose items near the child's mouth. They do come in heavier weight and fleece, uh, fleece thickness as well as thinner cotton and um, also come in uh, come with zippers or ones that you can pull over your child's head just like this. Um, for more information, please feel free to visit safekidsdouglascounty.org or georgiasafetosleep.org. We heard from Congressman David Scott earlier in the show. This was a popular month for him in Douglas County because he also held his annual art competition at the Douglas County Courthouse. Students from across his district submitted art into the competition and finalists were selected to be displayed in the Douglas County Art Gallery. Judging of the art was conducted 
and an award ceremony was held to announce the winners. Here is a portion of the ceremony where the top three winners were revealed. But third place, <laughs> this duty comes from his master's choice, Miss Emma Bell. Miss Emma Bell. Okay, in second place, from Langston Hughes High School, Mr. Aronson Hurd Jr. Langston Hughes. That's what I'm talking about, hold up real high. Okay, so I'm gonna read off the prizes for the first place winner one more time. For the first place winner, they won a $12,000 scholarship to the Art Institute of Atlanta, $3,000 scholarship to the Savannah College of Art and Design, renewable up for four years, so that's valued at $12,000. A $1,000 scholarship to the art school of their choice, two round trip airfare tickets on Southwest Airlines to attend the National Ribbon Cutting in Washington, D.C., and your artwork will hang in the tunnel of the Cannon House building for one year. And that winner is from Langston Hughes High School, Christian Alexander. Whoa, man! Oh, boy! My Lord, my Lord, my Lord! Isn't that wonderful? So Man. the judges for the art competition stated that Christian's artwork was amazing use of color and texture, good lighting with the boys, Whoa. showing social hierarchy and nice expression of emotion. Wow, man, look at that. Now, um, I want to make sure we act. Let's count up this money. So, so, 12, 12. $12,000. $12,000, this is a $12,000 check, ladies and gentlemen. Isn't that wonderful? All right, that's 12. Plus 3,000 from Savannah College of Art and Design, so that's renewable for four years, so that's another 12,000. Another 12,000. <laughs> so. Then 1,000. $24,000. Plus another 1,000. Another 1,000. And that's it. <laughs> that's. That's, that's $25,000. Yep. $25,000. God bless you all for that. Let the word go out. We close the show this month with our hometown hero segment about an organization that has done a lot of good for our community but has fallen out of the spotlight. A gift of love was thought to have closed down after the director suffered some serious medical issues. This valuable organization has a new director who is ready to get to work, but she needs your help. Here is the reopening ceremony and some details you need to know. I'd like to thank everybody for coming. We appreciate your support. Without people like you guys, we couldn't do what we do. We have a few things going on today. Um, we have adopt a child. We're running uh, low on funds, so what we've decided to do is we've made paper dolls, boys and girls, and we've put some names on them with their sizes. If you would like to participate, there's a sheet. You sign your name and their name so I know who's got what. And then you bring them back here by the end of June so that we can put them in their um, bags. That's going to be a big, we have a big summer party in July. Different churches in the area host them. And um, so we will be collecting those and getting them to the children so each child will get a brand new outfit for the start of the new school year. And we also have backpacks that um, we filled, they're, they're already ready, and they have the school supplies depending on the age group. And um, they also have HBA products, which is your health and beauty. So they'll get new toothbrushes, shampoos, soaps, all that good stuff. And for those of you who don't know me, my name is Brenda and I'm the new director. Um, I took over for Juanita when uh, she had her strokes. She had two back to back when she affected her and she needed to let go. And instead of closing this program, we uh, took it over and we brought it over here to the new facility. The man who owned the other facility was ready to retire as well and he wanted to sell the building. So the church allowed us to come over here and use this building 
and it's been a chore and a job, but it's been a good one because we know that what we're doing is for the kids, and we've had some really wonderful things going on. We had an Easter party for them this year, and they came and they had a blast. We had over 100 children show up, and we hid Easter eggs all over the place in different age groups, and you tell them there's some more out there to look for, and they were gone. <laughs> So they really had a good time, and we're hoping that we can get more funds in so that we can do more things like that. But right now, um, our funds are a little low, and it's, you know, because we've changed. We were told that some people thought we closed. So we're trying to get the word out there that we're not closed. We're open, and we're going, baby. We've got 556 kids that we fed all the way up to the end of the, uh, this school year. And um, this county is growing, so we are anticipating that there might even be more next year. So anybody that you know of that's looking for a place to, to put some money into, we'll be glad to take it. Uh, I'm John Stone. I am the local president of the Wellness Club of Douglas County. We have in the past done a pancake breakfast for our gift of love. We did one this year at this facility. Uh, and we're here today to present a gift of love services incorporated. A check from the Qantas Club is also that of $1,187. Thank you very much. Thanks so much for watching BCTV 23. If you need any additional information about what you saw on the show today, all you have to do is go to our website at CelebrateDouglasCounty.com or email us at bctv23 at co.douglas.ga.us. Be sure to check out all of our shows here on your source for local news and entertainment. BCTV 23 is always on at Comcast Channel 23, AT&T Uverse Channel 99 and online at DCTV23.com.